Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick. I hope everybody is getting off to a great start in your week. Hope that those of you who celebrate the holidays are getting up in gear and swing, getting in the full swing of the holiday season. And I hope you enjoy your family and all the festivities and everything that you are desiring to do. Um, and before I get started, real briefly, you, you know the routine. If you believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, you believe uh, in the programs and the research uh, in the community, in activism and engagement and advocacy, uh, show some love, show some support. Look in the description box, click the link and give. It's really that simple. If you don't want to click the link, you can give to the organization's cash app account. All right, so uh, I want you guys to kind of hang with me pay attention because I'm going to be moving real fast, a lot to cover in a very short period of time, uh, but I want to talk about this. Everybody is losing their freaking mind because Andre 3000 didn't drop bars. He decided to play uh, multiple flute air instruments uh, that fall under the flute category, and most people aren't feeling it, and uh, I get it to a certain extent. I get it. We identify people with what we identify them with and we want to get that and when you have someone as gifted when it comes to spitting as Andre 3000 um, you want to hear him spit bars but what you got to understand is he represents a lot in his decision not to uh, put words to music but to play the flute and it's a lot going on here that I don't think people understand uh, and I'm going to address this with the hopes of inspiring us to do things and, and, and open our minds to some things versus always close down and clamp down and demand that people stay inside of the boxes that we ultimately put them in. He never said that's all he's ever going to do in his life. Uh, hopefully, everybody is growing in who they are. I'm not the person. I, you got to think the kid started when he was like 16. The first time you were introduced to this kid, he's 16. I think he's like 48 now. So you got to understand what's going on. You're talking about 32 years ago, he introduced himself and he's evolved since then. Uh, he's different. He's always been different. If you really want to pay attention to him, his genius is exceptional and extraordinary. Uh, I think that what happens with us, and, and, and I want you to pay attention, and again, I'm going to be moving real fast and kind of moving around. Uh, but I hope I make a point. We are so averse to change. Our uh, aversion to change is on an astronomical level. Um, we don't want change. We don't want to see change. We don't understand that the things we truly desire and yearn for in life, whether it's empowerment as a community, whether it's wealth as an individual, whether it's success in our careers and in our businesses, require change. It requires an intentional engagement of moving beyond where you are now to do something in a way that you have not yet done it. This is the process of elevation no matter what you are doing. And what we do is a lot of this is I just don't get it what is he doing but a lot of it is his change makes you uncomfortable you don't understand it it's not making sense but here's the beauty of this thing when you take time to step back and say look I'm going to evolve and I guess it's a little different for me coming from a family of musicians uh, and vocalists I see things different because I've been exposed to every type of music imaginable. So you can't miss me classical jazz um, and, you know, everything from R&B to uh, hard rock, heavy metal, soft rock, pop. I mean, I've consumed it and I found something in it. And every now and then I'll get to where something will pop up and it'll have a sound that I don't like, and I'll say, I'm going to at least listen to it. And I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, that's a song by Tim's called Free Mind. That song drove me absolutely nuts because I didn't like the way it sounded. So I just kept dismissing it. It's like, oh my God, every time it would come on, I would turn it off. And one day said something said, what are you doing? Listen first. And I listened, and, and that's one of my favorite songs because the thing, the, the words speak. Another one of my favorite songs right now is probably in the, the vein of country, it, even though it's by 
a Canadian artist that's more known as a rapper than anything else. Uh, and the song is To Be A Man by Dax. Uh, first, he did it by himself. Then he did a remix with Darius Rucker, who used to be the lead singer for Hootie and the Bowfish. And now he's just killing it in country music. But the the Mega Remix version has like eight or nine artists on it. And they are everything from black rappers, uh, mid-core rap, Christian rappers, rockers, country, everything. And they're talking about what it is like to be a man. And if you you hear it come on and you go, oh my God, the country so you turn it off. It's speaking. But here's the beauty of this, this, this uh, album. I think it's like eight tracks that Dre did what people what, what, what we have to understand is this is why I've been so heavily involved in pushing the need for us to manage our gates and the gates of our children when it comes to music because music is vibrational music literally emits energy and the energy that it emits has the ability to have by well not only the ability and capacity but it will impact your biological uh, performance it's going to impact your genes it's literally going to uh, determine whether you're stressed out, whether you're amped up, whether you're relaxed, whether you're in a phase of healing. All of these things literally are there. And they know that the vibrational energy of the music without the words, then you add the words to it to reinforce a, a poor vibrational frequency. And here's the beauty of this thing with uh, Andre. From what I understand, I obviously haven't measured it myself. What I understand, uh, those who have taken the time to measure it, uh, the Hertz measurements are coming in somewhere around four, mid 400 hertz uh ideal frequency for healing and i'm not just talking about emotional and mental while it does i'm also talking about bio biological and gene performance your genes are literally perceiving and interpreting um all of the energy around you people the, the people's thought the energy people's thoughts are emitting the energy that people's words are emitting uh the energy of your own thoughts, the energy of music and sounds and worries and, 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 and all of that has energy. And the more stress, I've been talking about epigenetics forever. A part of the epigenetics experience and the way that you manage your epigenetic experience is through managing your thought processes. Well, that's because when you manage your thought processes, you manage the energy. Well, he has a frequency that's ideal for healing, healing the mind, healing the heart, but genetically allowing the body to get into the state where it can heal each other. I'm talking about strengthening your immune system, strengthening your uh, uh, your ability to fight off all types of illnesses. And I mean major illnesses up to cancer. I've written on this. I've literally lectured on this internationally about the influence of epigenetics on cancer epigenetics on autoimmune diseases like lupus and type 2 diabetes and so many other things that we just sort of toss up well this is just you know uh you know hypertension all these things that we sort of kind of group in a thing well it's just you know black experience and then we either group it well it's probably because of the way we eat some of it is diet but a great deal of it is the environmental stresses that we face as a people and he created eight tracks where every freaking minute of those tracks are in a frequency that is ideal for healing. It's great for meditation. It's great for you to sit back and just listen to and let your body interpret the vibrational frequency that's been played so that you can get into a state of healing. And I guarantee you, when you listen to this, if you listen to it and you just sit back and let it play and then lose yourself in it, don't be sitting up trying to pick it apart. Just listen to it. And what you're going to find is it's going to take you to relax. I'm literally listening to it and drop my blood pressure about five points in probably less than five minutes. The stresses of it, you have to really understand what's going on. And again, uh, it's so much deeper than that. I mean, uh, and not everybody's gonna like everything. So if you don't like it because you don't like it, that's one thing. But if you don't like it because you wanted something different from him, you're not giving it a chance and you're not allowing for expansion. And when you don't allow for someone else to expand, guess who else is probably not expanding and growing? If someone else's growth bothers you, the chances are you're not growing. The thing is, you shouldn't expect the same thing from people every time they come in front of you. You should be looking for something different. You should want something different for them and for yourselves. So 
look, I'm gonna get ready to get off here, but I had to share that with you. We have got to get to a point to where we are demanding more of ourselves, but uh, enjoy the healing aspects of this and nothing else. Enjoy the healing aspects. This is a beautiful opportunity to experience something phenomenal to me. Um, no, it's not the banging thing. No, it's not the dope thing. When you said, man, did you hear what he said? And, oh, man, what was that, man? You know, blah, blah. And he's given us all that. We got plenty to go back and listen to where this dude totally tore up the track. We, we, we got that. What he's given us now is something different. And we either have an appreciation for it or we can develop an appreciation for it. You know, it's like certain foods. You have to develop a palate for it. You know, certain wines, you have to develop a palate. As a person who smokes cigars, you develop palates for new blends. You might get that blend the first time and go, oh my God, I hate this. And if you don't try it, you will always have that one basic blend that you started with, or you de will develop a complex palate that will allow you to enjoy multiple blends and multiple flavors, multiple aromas, all of these different things that come in these cigars. And you will enjoy it more. You will have be able to discuss it more. So you'll know what other people are talking about because you're you are already you already have it. Well your your spirit has a palate too and your spirit needs to be more complex. It needs to be more sophisticated. It needs to have more of an experience of what's going on, especially in the area of healing frequencies. And we shouldn't be so easily to diss and push aside something because it doesn't satisfy the superficial level of our yearnings and our desires because there's so much at a deeper level and i'm gonna leave it at that look and so again i'm off i'm about to get in here and try to relax for a minute um speaking of cigars but here's the thing if you believe in what we're doing show some love show some support i got a lot of stuff coming to you this week uh, starting tomorrow is going to be a few things I'm going to come at you with about the family. Um, but I really and truly want your support. We have an 18 month research program going on on mental health. Speaking of that, uh, to be a man, uh, song and video, it's, you know, something we really and truly, uh, man, I'm, I'm just listening to that song and the words. It's almost like somebody sat in on my session with men and took minutes of 